Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. This is our Visions and Dreams Nights. Now, uh, Mark Ottenweller was here uh, two weeks ago now, and he did a sermon called Visions and Dreams. And if you weren't here for that, if you didn't uh, listen to that, please go back and listen to it. It was super inspiring. And uh, a brother asked me earlier, he said, you know, did you call this the Vision and Mission Night, the Mission and Vision Night, I guess it's uh, flipped up there, uh, because you didn't want to scare people away with the fact that it is technically still the budget presentation. Yeah. And I said, you know, no, but if we have to do stuff like that, it's for hard-hearted people like yourself. No, but I, I, I share that to say, you know, uh, we are going to go through some numbers tonight and some uh, just reports on financially where we're at and those kinds of things. But, but we did, we want everybody to understand that as a church, we are moving in a direction. Uh, we have goals and dreams and we are trying to accomplish all kinds of things. And in order to do that, like there's a lot of moving parts and God has actually blessed us with a budget to be able to do certain things. And, and that is like, that is, that is a privilege. That is an, an amazing thing. And, you know, obviously it's from the goodness of y'all's hearts who do give and who do uh, enable us to be able to do the kinds of things uh, that we are doing. But I, we just wanted to remind us all today of where we're going and, and what we're dreaming about. And so I just, I, I wanted to take some time. I'm gonna open up with a scripture in Hebrews 11. I know I don't have it up there, but you guys all know this scripture probably by heart. It says, now faith is uh, being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. I think what's awesome about that is, you know, uh, Mark Ottenweller, when he preached, he preached out of the book of Acts, but it was when Peter was quoting Joel. And Peter has this quote where he says, you know, uh, there's going to be a time when the Holy Spirit gets poured out on all of us. And it says that your young men will dream dreams and your old men will, and the old men will see visions. And, and his, his primary point in this whole sermon was that God has dreams for what he wants the church to do and to be here on earth. And that God gives us all gifts so that we can accomplish his dreams. And so one of the things that I want to remind us of tonight is that we don't just come to church because it's a thing to do, right? We don't just come to church because it's good to be a part of this nice community. When Jesus first mentions the church, he calls it an offensive thing. He says that the gates of Hades will not overcome it. It means that as a church, we've got to be moving forward. We've got to be going somewhere. So several years ago, when Nikki and I, when God allowed us the opportunity to uh, lead the congregation and to uh, get with the elders and to cast a vision for the church, uh, we came up with a brand new vision and mission statement. So we're just going to review that really quickly as we move forward. Um, the vision of the church uh, is very simple, living the kingdom, okay? We want to be a church that lives out and expresses the kingdom of God to the world around us. But that means that we ourselves have to live like kingdom people. And that when people encounter either this congregation or an individual from this congregation, they will in fact have encountered the beauty and the goodness and the glory of Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Okay, that's the ultimate goal of where we want to be as a congregation, a congregation that lives out the kingdom of God. Now, in order to get there, we have a mission statement. It's three C's, right? Communion, character, and community, right? So communion, we want to live out the kingdom of God first through drawing near to God, being as close to God as humanly possible, or should I say as spiritually possible, because the Holy Spirit makes it uh, possible for us to be close to God. And when we commune with God, what that should do is transform our characters. I believe that's probably the hardest part in all of this, because many of us like our sinful natures, right? And it's a difficult thing to part with that, but when we're close to God, our characters are transformed, and when our characters are transformed, we can then go on to bring the kingdom 
to the communities around us. Communion, character, community. Those are the three C's. And so when we were dreaming about all of this, and I started off with Hebrews 11 because in Acts, when he talks about the Holy Spirit coming, and he talks about the fact that there are going to be young men and old men, there are going to be people uh, having a vision and a dream for God's kingdom, the very next thing that happens is that his Holy Spirit gets poured out. And then the rest of the book is the Holy Spirit literally acting through the disciples to change the world, living out the kingdom of God. And the cool thing about the book of Acts is that when the book of Acts ends, Jesus hadn't returned yet. But all of them had a vision and an idea and a dream of when Jesus comes back, what are things going to be like? But here's the deal. They weren't, they weren't just waiting around in that upper room for Jesus to come back. They were like, until he comes back, we are going to show the world the kingdom that he is bringing. And they showed the world that through their actions. So as we talk through tonight, the different budgets and the different things that are going on, my encouragement to all of us, like it's, it's not just me and Nikki and the elders and the ecclesiastical team. It's not just us that are dreaming about the congregation. This congregation and this church will be what we all make it. And so instead of just us having dreams, I wanted to present this question to you guys tonight. What are your dreams for the Cola Church? Now, David has created a link, and this is, this is a question that I want you to think about. I want you to pray about. I want you to get your notebooks out and write this question down. And I want you to talk with your discipler, talk to your D groups, talk to your house churches, talk to whoever about what are the dreams that you have for what God is going to do with this church. David has created a link, colachurch.com slash dream. And if you go there, you can send your dreams in so that we, the staff and the elders, can be praying about all of those dreams. Because we want these dreams to be reality. Now, obviously, you know, don't be dreaming something crazy, right? Um, I, don't even, I don't even know. I don't want to say anything wild. But, you know, our dreams obviously need to be in line with God. And ultimately, God's dream is that all men come into a knowledge of the truth and that they can grow up in spiritual maturity to be kingdom people. And now I'll close out here again, starting and both ending in, in Hebrews 11. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and something of what you do not see. But then if you read the rest of Hebrews 11, what happens? We see people going and living out their faith. Faith is not just a hope. It's not just a belief. Faith is an action that is motivated by the belief and by the hope and by the dream. So when you write down your dreams and you pray about them and you fast about them and you send them in, my encouragement to you is be the dream maker, right? Go out and live in a way that is going to accomplish the dreams that God has put on our hearts. And as we talk through the rest of this night, when we go through the budgets and the numbers and all of those things, you might think this is boring, but no. These are all the things that are necessary for us to accomplish the things that God wants us to accomplish. So uh, let's dream together tonight, church. Amen? Amen. At this time, uh, my dad, who is newly, freshly come, renewed from Africa... He is going to say a prayer from us, uh, for us, to uh, get the night started. Amen. Greetings from a lot of brothers and sisters from, from Africa. So a little more, more about that as we, will, as we get into that. But uh, let's go to God in the word of prayer as we pray for the rest of the, uh, tonight's service. Mighty God, Father, we are grateful, God, that you give us dreams. God, that you give us visions, God, and that your vision is perfect, God. Your dreams are perfect. And Father, you allow us as your children to be a part of that. As you give us a purpose, God, as being disciples, God, that we can put our old selves away, God, and be freshly renewed with your spirit. And as tonight, as we talk about the rest of the service tonight, about not just numbers, God, but the impact that those numbers can do, God. Father, it's such a great, great time to see the brothers and sisters over in Africa, God, and 
We'll hear from them, God, of just how much of an impact those dollars do. So, Father, it's not about the money. It's not about us just giving, but it is actually changing lives around the world, God. So we're grateful, God, that we can be here, God, as we talk about the board, the new members coming on, God. As we talk about each part of the church, whether it be singles, whether it be campus, youth and family, and future direction, God. Open our hearts, God, to what you want us to hear tonight. Let us not think it's just numbers and boring stuff, God. It's really an application, God, of how your spirit is moving throughout and with us tonight. So pray, God, that this glorifies you, that edifies the church, God, and you be praised in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hopefully this part is not boring. I actually, I happen to really like numbers. Um, and tonight I'm going to talk mainly in percentages because people seem to think and graph things better in percentages. So I'm waiting for the slide. Oh, how's it going? I don't know. <laughs> One more slide maybe. Okay. Okay. So um, for 2023, on the left side, we have our budgeted amounts. And on, on the right side, we have the actual expenses that we incurred and the percentage. Um, if, we, if, you, if it's over 100%, that means we went over budget in that category. If it's under 100%, we were under budget. Um, so if you look down at the employment, you see that we were at 74%. Um, usage of that budget and last year we had a placeholder for a youth and family couple um, and we also were not paying an administrator for three quarters of the year so that's why we were under budget there actually let me back up to the top is there a is there an income line to this nope okay well I guess I will tell you, but you will not see it. Um, <laughs> we had budgeted 16500 per week last year for the offering. Um, the actual income was $16,280. Um, so we were pretty close to what we budgeted. Um, and then, okay, so I'll go back down to the facility. We were over budget here because we have a new sign out front. We also have some new air conditioning units that are very expensive out back for the kids kingdom um, so that's why that was over budget administrative was slightly over um, we installed a whole bunch of new cables to be able to live stream last year that was in the facility expense and the AV team, uh, AV team has done a great job at getting the live stream up and running uh, and um, in the administrative expense we have an increased expense for um, the service that we use for being able to live stream. Um, and one other thing that I wanted to mention in case you weren't aware, we had a significant increase in our merchant fees. Um, and what that means is Tithely charges us to be able to process um, credit cards, debit cards, ACH transactions for giving. Um, and you, when you give, you might see a, a box that says, you know, you can help um, cover the fees. And for ACH transfer, it's a 1% fee. For a debit um, and credit card that's not an Amex, it's 2.9%, and an Amex is 3.5%, and it's 30 cents per transaction. And what that resulted in for the church in covering the cost was about almost one week's worth of income. Um, so it was about $16,000 in processing fees last year. Um, so if you give that way, you know, maybe consider covering the fees or cash and check have no fees for us to process. So something to consider um, and helping uh, get some of those offerings back. Um, and then congregational, we were under budget there, 77%. The ministry costs, that's um, Kids Kingdom, Campus, Singles Ministry, all those ministries, Usher Ministry was at 91%. And this left us at a, okay, yeah, that's up there, a budget surplus of about $82,000. Um, that surplus also includes an overage 
and what we got to collect from missions, which was super awesome. We hit our goal. Matt's going to talk more about that. Um, and that's included in that. And we'll see what the next slide is because it's a little bit different from mine. Okay. I can't see back there. Restricted funds, is that what it says? Yes. All right. Um, hmm? There's no TVs on. It's okay. I have it right here. Okay. Um, so at the year end, we had about... 18,000 benevolence. Um, this is available to any member. If you are finding yourself in need for utilities, for any sort of crisis, um, you can come. Brett Caswell is our deacon of benevolence. You can reach out to him. He has forms. Lisa Davenport has forms. Um, they just request that you give them more like, than 24 hours. Like if you have 24 hours and you know, bad things are going to happen in 24 hours, please give us you know, at least 72 hours to process requests. Um, but the money is available, so please um, reach out if you need help. The Swamp Fund has about $7,000. I know that the, um, there's a lot there available to help people get to camp, so please ask Matt, maybe. Yep, he said yes, ask Matt if you need help with that. There's also an adoption fund, in case you didn't know. We have about $12,000 to help people adopt. Um, we have a Ramsey Fund, which is there for... Um, medical emergencies in our third world churches. Um, disaster relief, this amount was actually dispersed at the beginning of this year. It was um, held onto for Haiti, um, but we were able to send that on to Hope, and I'm sure it's doing great down there. Um, we have 6,000 left in Hope and about 68,000 left in missions in a reserve, and I know the missions team has been in discussion about ways to be able to use those funds um, to help the different uh, AMA and CMA, CMA, CMS, CMS, CMS yes. Um, so this leaves us at the end of the year with the restricted funds balances of about 124,000 and our unrestricted funds of 710,000. Um, and I know that there's a lot of dreams and um, projects that the elders and staff are hoping to use some of this money for. And I'm not sure if they're going to be discussing that at all tonight, but. It's great that we have that. <laughs> okay, my last slide. See, I told you this was going to be kind of fast-ish. Let's see what it says. Not this one. Next one. Okay, this is also does not include the income chart. Well, this year's budget, we have uh, budgeted for a weekly offering of 16400 Currently, at the end of April, we are averaging $15,785. Oh, there it is. Nope. Okay. Um, so we're a little bit under budget, but it typically starts picking back up um, to get closer to that number. And what's cool is this year we should be seeing some actual interest income. I just told you about our cash balances, but we've been able to put $200,000 of that unrestricted funds into a CD account. Um, for one year, and that's incurring about, it's getting, or accruing, not incurring, uh, <laughs> about five point something percent interest um, that we'll be able to get back. And the rest of those funds, if you get nervous about banks um, going bankrupt, uh, we were able to get the rest of the funds FDIC insured by putting them into a sweep um, that is also accruing interest at a lower rate, but somewhere between one and 2%. So these are both things that we're counting on to create more income for this year. And then, is, is there a graph? Or maybe not. Okay, a graph. Um, so we have our total operating expense this year. Um, our biggest expense is employment. But within that, we have six full-time staff and we have six part-time staff for 2024. And that includes benefits, it includes everything. Um, and that's why that's the biggest percentage there. And um, facilities, we got about 14% of the budget and then administrative is 11%, congregational is 4%, and ministry is 8%. And our budget um, was created in such a way as to leave us with a budget surplus or extra money, I guess you could call that, at year ends um, of about $18,000. So, that's what I got.
Okay, that was exciting. <laughs> it was. I love, I love numbers too. It was very exciting. Don't laugh, Cody. Uh, uh, the, the reason you wonder why Stacy got up here and did that is because she is the board treasurer. She's done a wonderful job this year. And uh, <clears throat> she filled in kind of as an administrator without getting paid for it. So uh, thank her for that. She did a really good job. Uh, I am up here to talk about missions, global missions, uh, and the reason we do missions is to assist uh, poor churches, really, in our fellowship, mainly in Africa and in the uh, Caribbean. Um, we're going to have several, we're going to have the, uh, like they said, uh, Stephen, um, what's his name, is going to speak on uh, our mission Sunday, June 2nd. <laughs> And uh, Edwin and uh, Murray Golly is coming in July, so they'll be here for a couple of weeks, and he'll get to speak to us too, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Dwight gave me some information on, on their trip this past week. They had a big conference with all the speakers, all the um, leaders in the African regions. They have almost 14,000 disciples in those regions, and in Central Africa region is led by Moses and Honore Kalala, they said it's the fastest growing region in Africa. Um, and several people sent us gratitude. Juju and Judea Rodriguez, Rodriguez from Angola uh, sends us thanks for helping them. Edwin, Edwin and Christine Shumba, whom I think y'all have seen before in Harare, they were thanking us. Dylan from Nambia, uh, he said the funds that we sent them a few years ago helped them to come into the full-time ministry as a paid minister. And he's so grateful for that. I think we sent like $15,000 and it, it gave them a whole year's worth of salary. So our, our giving really goes a long way in these third world countries. Um, so I'm going to, uh, let's see, go to the next slide, David. Okay, these are the churches that we're helping. Uh, our money is split up between Africa um, 120, well, this is on the next slide, but you can see all the uh, churches in these countries that we are helping. And we've been doing this for several years. We split it up with Harari getting the most help and then the rest of them getting maybe between ten and $20,000. So that's where most of the money going. On the Caribbean side, um, the money goes into the uh, CMS fund and they sp split it up. I'm on the board of CMS and we split it up into uh, uh, who the greatest needs and, and meet, meet the needs there. Next slide. Yes. My name is Moses Kalala. Honorin Kalala. Uh, we are the leader in the Kinshasa. Let me, let me say a little. And, uh, oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead, David. Yes. My name is Moses Kalala. Honorin Kalala. Uh, we are the leader in the Kinshasa Church of Christ and uh, supervising the work of God in the Central Africa yeah. uh, region and uh, which is uh, six nations uh, Congo DRC, uh, Congo Brazzaville, Cameroon, uh, Gabon, uh, Central African Republic and Chad. We would like to say thank you so much to Columbia Church for your many many years of uh, contribution and supporting our church uh, in Central Africa. On behalf of the church in Cameroon, where Goli and uh, Mireille Goli leading, uh, we are very grateful for you guys have been doing for many years supporting uh, the church over there and in uh, Central African Republic. I would like to say that th thank you on behalf of our brother um, uh, Freeman yeah. Garua and Christelle, yeah. who are leading the church over there. Yeah. Thank you so much, and may God bless you for all you have been doing for many, many years. Yeah. May God bless you. Thank you a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Is there another slide, David? There was a slide, but anyway. Uh, so the CMS gets part of the money, AMA. Uh, some of it goes to travel, a small amount to travel to bring people in from Africa to visit here or for us to visit in Africa. About 5,000 goes to the Swamp Fund, which Jeff Robar, they travel the world and set up swamp camps for people in these third world countries. 
and also the community, which y'all see here, uh, Carlene and Eric and some of the uh, guys help out, giving out about 50 uh, to 50 families every week in supplies, and that uh, helps a, a big need there. Um, <clears throat> for this year, we have about $26,000 uh, so far in our missions global fund. Our goal is $165,000, so we have a ways to go on that. So uh, the, the goal is 164.5, I believe it is. It was on a slide, but it looks like it's gone dark on me. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, there it is. There we go. Okay. I think I was right on that. And, um, so um, the Bible, you know, commands us in Old Testament and New Testament to give to the poor. And I wanted to read a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, in verse 10. And this is Paul speaking to the church. He says, and here's my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were not only to give, the first to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. And I know with inflation, it's a lot of us that own that latter part, what you don't have. But I think if we will really uh, make a decision to really try to give what we can, I know a lot of people give a lot, and we're very grateful for that. But, uh, you know, if, if you have a small budget, uh, please try to give something to help out these churches. They, they are very, very grateful for it, and they really, really need it. So uh, thank you guys so much. David, so I got my paper copy here. Um, so I get the good part. I get to talk about potential new board members and staff. And uh, I wanted to say a couple things about the board. Everybody says, hey, the board does this, the board does that. What Stacy was talking about with the finances, you know, we looked at some things. We look at risk, right? So we looked at banks were failing and what's going on and what can we do to protect ourselves, right? And we look at... Uh, I think sometimes say, people say, what could possibly go wrong, right? Unfortunately, we have to think about those things. I'm glad that when I'm done, I don't have to think as much about that stuff. I'll still have an eye on it, but, you know. So sometimes we can come across as the people who are freaked out by everything, but we, we really look at those things. And, and that's why in this presentation, we really wanted, with ministry staff and elders, to present the vision. The money kind of is behind the scenes in that. But... Uh, you know, we, we talked in the past about treasures in heaven, but, you know, when we think about what God really treasures, it's souls. Yeah. And all these things are to store up souls in heaven, Amen. you know. So, um, also, all the information Stacy gave was kind of an overview. If you need more information, come see us or, or Lisa, and we can get you additional financial. We want to be a totally an open book, but we don't want everybody going through everything wondering what's what, Okay. Um, I do want to also say the, these uh, potential board members that we're talking about, we're looking for the congregation to, to, to approve them in a corporate meeting that we'll have on Sunday, uh, June 9th, and we'll open up voting online on the 5th. We do have to have a quorum for that, so I don't know whether it's going to be numbers-wise, 160-something people probably we need to have, so let's be sure we're trying to be there, okay? Uh, before we move on, I, I do want to honor the current board. Uh, current board is Denise Williams Smith, Margaret Crewell, Connie Cooper, Stan Cobbs, Chris Loveland, and Barry Thompson. And then uh, this year, coming off the board, will be Caesar Gorman, Stacy Alritz, and myself. So let's move on to thank you. <laughs> let's move on to the board nominees. Ooh, that looks different too. David, you're crossing me up. Okay. Now I got to put my glasses on. Okay, there we go. All right. Is there another slide, David? Do you, do you have a bio on them too, or is that. Okay. So, um, so 
Kimberly or Kimmy Coles, you, you all know, has been, uh, has served in the children's ministry, gives us a fresh face on the board. Uh, there are some bios that we'll, we'll get out to you, but uh, so, so she's got some background in, in, in healthcare, business, and uh, it would be a fresh face for us. Most of you know Paul Lease. Paul uh, has an accounting background, but it's been business. He's been an elder. Uh, he studied the Bible with me, so if y'all don't like me being here, sorry. Uh, <laughs> right, so um, yeah, so, and Paul's been a disciple. I did the math off his bio, it's over 35 years, I believe, so that's a while. Longer than some of you have been alive, but not me. Um, <laughs> And then our other nominee, Hazel Lohman. Hazel has served on the board in Charleston, served on the HOPE board. Hazel works with the community outreach, really has a heart for those ministries. So uh, being on the board is not just business necessarily. We want people who have a real heart for the ministry, a heart for the church, but are really good at discerning. So I will encourage you that if you're interested in serving on the board, or you want to be a part, or you want to know what's more what's going on, reach out to us. Our board meetings are open to people to come. We can give you an assignment, work with it, get a feel for what it is before you commit to it. Um, we're always looking for people to serve. Um, I need to circle back to, with Kimmy, we've taught together in children's ministry and I have to say, y'all need to try to serve in children's ministry. You know, have a heart for that. That is, uh, you know, we got VBS coming up. There's a board out there with all sorts of stuff on it. So. Um, let's move on to the next one. All right, so, um, bef right. so before I say anything about Chris, though, I do want to say um, the last year plus we've been without an administrator. Now, you may think about the financial side of that, but that's a big role. And it isn't just the board, it's the staff has been missing a big piece, a kind of a central cog in the puzzle. And Chris is really good with working with people, but Chris also has a very good way of saying, hey, wait a minute, what are we doing? And uh, that's what we need in that role. And, and Chris is gonna be excellent at that. Uh, but we do need to recognize too, originally we had a full-time administrator position. This, this position is moving to part-time we're using Walker and Company, who's an outside accounting group, who's very professional about what they do, uh, and they do an excellent job for us, and it's, it's also very cost effective. So we are doing that, but Chris is gonna be stepping into a role on a part-time basis that was a full-time role and trying to get up to speed. So be patient with Chris, but also understand that the entire staff, along with the board, has really been stretched over the last year. And we've, uh, there's been a few times where we've maybe butted heads, but uh, I think we've come out the better for it. So <laughs> praise God to that. So um, excited about Chris taking that role. Let's go to the next one. All right, so. See, I got the good part, didn't I? This is great. Um, so before I say something about Mike, I'd be remiss, remiss not to say something about all Scott has done yeah. and Kendra. You know, we talk about the staff and, 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 and the strain of an administrator not being here. Scott has been just an incredible servant to the church, but in that role, uh, just steady, uh, very, he cares deeply and has lost sleep about a lot of things too. So he really cares deeply and has done an excellent job. And those would be big shoes to fill. But in Mike, we have somebody who's got a lot of really good experience. And it was funny because they all put resumes in. I looked at Mike's, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. You need to talk to Mike about all the things he's done. The facility management and, and he's done contracting and done all this kind of stuff. So uh, Michael needs support, getting up to speed, same kind of thing. It's a part-time role. Uh, he'll be working directly with uh, Mike Lohman who does an excellent job around the building too. Um, so, you know, we're very excited about those two. So uh, takeaways on this. June 9th, we've got our opportunity to approve the proposed board members, and they were went th we went through that with the with the uh, with the elders and uh, and the board, and these are these are excellent people for this role. Um, I did forget to say, but Chris, uh, because he's becoming administrator, is going to step off the board, so the board will will look to appoint a replacement for him. So, um, but anyway, June 9th, June 5th. Um, 
If you have any questions about the board, uh, don't, don't wander, come see us. Thanks. So, this is going to be super, super brief, but we're super excited about some of this. Um, very briefly, uh, Campus Ministry has, Dom and Emily are doing a fantastic job. God is really, come on up. God, God, over here. God, yeah, you're fine. God is, is doing amazing, amazing things. Uh, and we are super grateful for everything that God is doing with Emily and Dom. Um, the, the amazing, one of the amazing things is God's just about more than doubled the campus ministry over this past year. Uh, and yeah, amen. And that's even with uh, Dom and Emily uh, adding two more Camerino girls. So... Uh, which is super awesome. Um, as kind of an example of what this kind of looks like, uh, last year, uh, the church was able to uh, have two interns, and they did a great job. We love them to death. Uh, we tried to get some of them to come this year, but they had bigger and better things to go on to. Um, we had two last year, but kind of like the campus ministry, we've a little more than doubled, and this year we have five. Now, it looks like four, <laughs> but <laughs> that's just because Joseph Caswell is sick. So um, it, we've got Joseph and Kamani and Devin and Irene and Ami. Um, Irene is from North Carolina. She's from Charlotte. Ami is kind of an interesting uh, mix in that Ami's actually from here in town uh, and came and uh, through the power of God kind of handed us a, a teen ministry this past year, uh, which is kind of exciting. But Ami's also up at Clemson and is going to be uh, helping the, Kemp, the Clemson ministry be praying for him. One of these days, he's going to be campus minister, and he's going to need a lot of help. Uh, but we're excited about having him this summer for even the little bit of time that we get him. Um, we've more than doubled kind of the number of campus interns that we're doing. The, the church, what we, what we did this past year, we did a big pivot in that we had life stage ministries that were very, honestly, guys, we're kind of in silos. We had life stage ministries that we decided, look, we're going to spread into house churches, going to be a lot more geographical, going to train people by being in house churches, what it's kind of like to be part of a small church just in case you ended up on a mission team somewhere. Um, that, and I think most people have really enjoyed the house churches and, and meeting as house churches and being organized by house churches. I, I think it's been fantastic. Um, the, the advantage of doing it that way, though, is we're going to be kind of able to kind of blend in and have ministries kind of blend together a little bit. Um, the singles... Um, I don't know if there's a singles, yeah. The singles, um, we're in a little bit of a rebuilding stage with the singles. If you are a single, there, if, if, I were, if I were doing this, there would be a temptation for me to think, well, okay, I used to lead a Bible talk, but now I'm kind of in a house church and most of the singles are not necessarily leading house churches. And there would be a temptation for me to think service is no longer required. Honestly. And I hope that God helps all of us to not think like that. You're in a house church, 
so that you can be in a family and you've got some other people that are going to be helping kind of plan what we're doing from week to week kind of thing. You've got kind of a home to be part of, but we want you to be freed up to go live life, love God, go out and do things for God. Maybe that's, that means, maybe that means here. Maybe that means, I, I know David uh, Lang has already said, hey, get a singles uh, group together. Come on out to uh, Grand, Stand and go on, Grand Strand and go on some dates and uh, we'll get one of you guys to do communion message that week. But we're, we're hoping that the singles ministry will kind of get together and do things together and live life and love God and grow. Um, I, I warned them kind of in the spirit of always be prepared to give an answer. I warned them ahead of time this today. I said, be ready for a one sentence answer to the question of what are you, what are you talking to God about doing with you this year, this summer? What you think? Hi, boss. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, my one sentence answer. One sentence. Um, is I am praying and asking God to use me to show the light that he has shown me, the love he's shown me, and project that to other people who might not, you know, be in the faith or might not have that. Amen. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, boss. Wow, you put it perfectly. All right, so my one thing that I want God to show me throughout the summer is just that anybody can do, think, do great things for the kingdom. Amen. That's awesome. Um, my one thing is for God to use me in a way where people don't see me anymore, they only see God. Amen. Mm. Amen. That's awesome. Okay. My one thing is uh, the reason I'm here in Colombia is kind of to just build relationships to, Amen. you know, like you said, I'm from Colombia, uh, go to Clemson now, Amen. and I'm doing the internship there in Clemson, but always love my time here in Colombia. So I was like, Amen. I want to come back and spend a couple of weeks here with you guys and, and really just build and bridge relationships here. So Amen. Yeah. Amen. we're excited about this. This is going to be awesome. And I'm going to let the youth and family minister stuff go. Amen. It's amazing that uh, we get to... Oh, no, don't go nowhere. Oh. <laughs> One thing I do, I love company, right? So if you guys are up here, then it takes the pressure off of me, right? So I appreciate it. So just stay right there. Because if you don't understand this, right, I get the opportunity to talk about youth and family ministry. And we don't have kids in youth and family anymore because they're all gone and doing their thing and one is in campus, so which is cool. Because one day, all these folks right here will be youth and family people. Right. That's right. And that's the future of the church. Amen. Youth and family. Some of them will lead churches that have 100 kids. They'll be doing all kinds of things. Right. Ask Dom, they just had twins and didn't know that it was gonna happen. So. Amen. So I'm really pleased to just talk about youth and family a little bit, um, just about the great things that are happening within the teens and middle school ministries. Uh, it's amazing. We were t praying for ministers and people to come in and help us make this thing grow. But God has a funny sense of humor. And what he did was he sent Ami to Columbia and instead of giving us a minister, he gave us someone who brought the word to some white nose students. Amen. And then these guys just out of the blue started getting baptized. Amen. So we were great to see a couple of guys from white nose, actually three guys um, from white nose get baptized. Then we had um, Anaya uh, Boxwell Amen. along with... Um, uh, Caleb, um, Caleb Quam, and um, one more, right? No, that's it. So it's amazing how God is making the ministry grow Amen. through the people that are here. 
Amen. Not through this magical couple. Right. Now, we do have plans for this magical couple one day. We are restructuring that position and what it looks like and praying that God will send us the right people right. to make that grow. Right. But we're very excited about the momentum our middle school ministry right. is having. Um, we have some great couples serving and leading that ministry Amen. right now. Amen. Has take, it, it, It's just a breath of fresh air. I'm, I'm sure the Matt and Sue are excited about that and how they get a little break. But um, also my wife and I, we get an opportunity to serve these ministries, but it's been just a joy for us to have people in place that will be able to take this thing to greater Amen. heights. Amen. So we're great, super thankful. Want to just remember there are great things coming. Now, I know we're talking about youth and family, and we're talking about the teens and middle schoolers, but we do have some things coming from the young, younger married couples with kids mm -hmm. coming this fall with some, um, some keg region, some regional thing activities that will be happening, as well as some local activities that will be happening for mm -hmm. the young families this fall. So young families, don't feel left out. It's coming. These other ministries are moving, but you're not forgotten. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. We appreciate all you do. Just one of the things I hope you take home from this is that part of our pivot is because God has told us, uh, go in the strength you have. You, we are the people we've been looking for. And the campus ministry interns three out of five of them are from here, which is super exciting. And there's money to send your kids to camp. No, no, stay up here. No, 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 you're gonna sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> um, I just wanna give a quick update on the uh, marriage ministry. Um, the, the rhythm of the marriage ministry right now is super simple. We're trying to do one big fun thing uh, every quarter of the year. And then pretty consistently, we're trying to have marriage devos as well. Uh, and, and, and the big idea is we want our marriage to be living life to the full, to be enjoying marriage, but also to be growing in their marriages as well. And I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, and I mentioned the idea that uh, a healthy marriage starts with both individuals making Jesus Lord and working on their characters, right? A lot of times we want to have the conversation of how do we fix this marriage? Well, you fix the marriage by fixing your character. And so that's a lot of, I know when we hear the word Devo, it can be the idea of like, we've done this a thousand times, but really we need to together get into the word pray and be reminded that we need to be living like Jesus. Uh, and, and marriage can be a beastly thing. It's supposed to be a blessing, but Satan gets in there and he can turn it into something that is monstrous, something that zaps away all joy and goodness from life. And the last thing we want is for the kingdom people, right, to be uh, to fall prey to that kind of trap. So the devos and the fun times are all in order to enrich these marriages, uh, helping everybody to grow closer to Jesus so that their relationships can be not only something that they enjoy, but something that glorifies God and helps show other people in the world what it's like to have a godly marriage. Uh, and there are so many people out there, so many married people that need to know what it's like to be married in the kingdom of God. Uh, so that's what's going on in the marriage ministry. And I just wanna close out here talking about uh, the big dream and the vision that we have uh, as Cola Church. Now, I know I've mentioned this a few times. We don't make too big of a deal out of, deal out of it. I don't want everybody to get ahead of themselves. But the, the big goal is that by 2030, we become a parent church. Now, uh, the language I was using before is that we want to plant a church by 2030. Uh, but as we've been gearing up and as we've been uh, as a staff and as an eldership talking through it and praying through it, um, there, there's just there's different ways that we can uh, become healthy and grow in that way. One of the ways is planting a church. Another way, though, is to become a church that sends people to help support other smaller churches. A big dream that the CEG region, I know we, we, we uh, Eric mentioned the, the, the term keg. It's uh, CEG is the new region that we're a part of. We were the Southeast, but it's, um, we've shifted to just being the Carolinas and East Georgia. And so uh, the big dream for the CEG is that we have a church within 45 minutes of anywhere within the CEG. That's the big dream. It means that we're going to have to plant several churches, and those churches are not going to be 
in your large metropolitan areas, right? Uh, and, and, I, and I think that can be off-putting to people, right? The idea of moving somewhere like a Newberry or an Orangeburg, right? Or a Florence. The idea of moving away from the metropolises, if you can call Columbia a metropolis, uh, you know, into the more rural, uh, rural areas. But we, like, we want the gospel to go everywhere, uh, and it means it's going to take some self-denial. It's going to take some sa- sacrifice. It's going to take a lot of training. And this is exactly why we've shifted into house churches. The house churches are the training ground for us to be able to send out people or teams to accomplish goals like this. Um, and the idea would be that we would work together with other churches. But, you know, other than Columbia and Charleston and like, uh, and, and there are some bigger churches in um, North Carolina as well. But a lot of the churches in South Carolina are smaller churches. And so even though, and that's why I said become a parent church, because one option, if we get healthy enough, is we'll be able to plant a church. Another option, though, is that maybe we, within this next decade, send teams out to Myrtle Beach, to Greenville. And I mean like teams of people to move there so that we can support them and grow them. And so maybe when those churches are larger larger and stronger, we really start to look towards planting uh, in those other areas. But, But either way, by 2030, the dream is that Cola Church is in a place where we have those resources. You know, I had a conversation, um, with the Caswells a few years ago, just talking about Orangeburg. And, and, and one of the things that I mentioned was like, not only uh, did we not necessarily have the funds to really support that project, like we wanted to support it, we didn't have the people to support that project like we wanted to support it. And that's a big thing. Right now, where our church is at, if we try to plant a church next year, I don't think we would have the funds or the people, right? But starting next year, um, we're really going to begin the conversations, the praying, the fasting, uh, to look towards that time in 2030 and say, okay, you know, what is God going to allow us to do in those five years? But everything we are doing, all the budgeted money that we talked about, all the youth and family events, the marriage events, the teen events, and the, and the camp, all of it, singles events, the house churches, everything we're doing, the sermon series, right? This year is all about being a kingdom builder. All of it is working towards building us up so that we can be healthy and mature enough so that by that time, we can multiply and see churches either planted or supported. That's the dream, guys. And, and uh, I want to close out with the, with the idea of the dream is only realized when we all grab a hold of it. And I know it's a Wednesday night, and I know we're, quote unquote, used to it being thinner on a Wednesday night. Um, But what encourages me is that even if just the people in this room believed, had faith, and put their everything into this dream, God can do just mind-blowing things. And the goal is that it's not just the people in this room, but that we can engage every single house church so that over the next five years, God can just blow our dreams out of the water. So as we close out tonight, um, we really just, we want to put it on all of your hearts. Everything is working towards helping as many people as possible come to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ so that they too can experience the beauty and the glory of the kingdom of God. Uh, Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father God, thank you so much for giving us the chance and the opportunity to partner with you and bringing your kingdom to the world around us. Um, I pray that you can inspire us and encourage us and give us the fire we need to not just believe the right stuff, not just say the right stuff or preach the right stuff, God, but inspire us and empower us to go out and live the right way, to be agents of your glory. Please, God, show us these dreams fulfilled. In your uh, son Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for coming out. You are dismissed.